Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the essentially the first video in the Tamiya Corsair F4U uh, build. Um, so we're going to start at step one, essentially focusing on the cockpit. Um, so quite a simple construction. What I plan to do uh, in the T55 video, you obviously saw me removing parts from the sprue, cleaning those parts up, etc, etc. I'm not going to go over old ground. Um, because if you want to see how that's done or how I do it, then you can obviously see in the in the T55 series. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to remove all these parts from the sprue. I'm going to clean them all up. I'm going to prime them and I'm going to get the base color on them because all that stuff you've seen me do before. And then we're going to come back. We'll do some decaling around the instrument panel um, and the seat belts and all that stuff. Get that done. Once all that's done, we're then going to move on to weathering the cockpit um, to try and get it a bit more sort of natural looking. So I'll be back in a bit. What I'm going to do is get all these removed, get them cleaned up, get them base painted, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at decaling and how I'm going to do that and what products I'm going to be using. In the meantime, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, hit the bell notification, and while you're waiting for me to come back, which to be fair is only going to be about five seconds for you, don't forget to go and visit umpretail.com um, where you'll find lots of cool stuff to enhance your modeling experience for sure. So uh, I'll be back in a second and all this will be painted and ready for decaling. See you in a minute. Okay, so we have all the, the various cockpit uh bits painted um so they were primed in ump black primer um the reason i haven't showed it in the video back in the t55 video you saw me applying primer and paint and all that stuff it's just same old same old i've done nothing different with this um let the primer dry and then we've given it a few light coats of xf71 uh, which is cockpit green. I appreciate that it's probably not the most accurate cockpit green, but it's what I have. I'm not going to go out and buy specific colours to do one aircraft, and it's close enough for me. So that's all done. What we did do is on the instrument panel and stuff, we just masked that off with Tamiya tape, um, and that is the UMP black primer um, showing through. And then we obviously sprayed the, the cockpit green. We did the same on this piece here with the side side panels. And we'll also do the same on the interior of the fuselage. So what we need to do now um, is apply some decals. Because as I said, we're, we're not building this with loads of aftermarket and everything else. I'm building this as best I can completely out of the box to see what sort of result we can achieve without having to go out and spend lots of money on aftermarket and that sort of stuff. Obviously, you've got people like Quinter Studio, Red Fox, Edward, they'll all do interior cockpit sets for this particular kit, um, but we're not going down that route with this one. So, we need to apply the instrument panel decal, obviously, to the instrument panel. This little square set of dials goes on this bit here. And then we need to apply the seat belts. And I'm hoping these are going to work. Um, you can put the decal onto like masking paper or, or whatever to make them a little bit thicker. But to me, a decal, decals, decals are quite thick anyway. So we'll see if that works straight onto the seat. There's no weathering at all done on this currently. That will all be done once these decals are on. There's no clear coat. I'm going straight onto the paint. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to be using two products, essentially. The first one being Microsoft Industries Micro Set. That's what we're going to place the decal on top of. Um, but then how we're going to make them work, really, is by using the Ultimate Modeling Products decal solutions. So they come in three strengths, normal, strong, and extra strong. I don't think for a second we're going to need the extra strong um, I use these all the time so I can kind of judge um, what strength I'm going to need. So we're going to be using the strong once 
uh, the decals are on to make them bed down uh, and all around all the details etc what i would suggest is if you're new to using these because they're very potent start off with normal see how it is and then move up the levels um, but because i use them all the time i'm going to go straight to the strong then what we're going to use is just some very basic q-tips or cotton buds and even more basic toothpick tweezers and a hobby knife or scalpel that's a 10a blade in there we're also going to use one of these which is essentially i've had this for years it's a watercolor pen um, i don't put anything in it but it, it's perfect for for decals the way it works um, so we'll be using that as well um, and i'll be decanting the decal solutions into these so these are available from ump they're actually sort of the bottle caps that you get in the cleaner and thinner but you can buy sets of just these and they're ideal for this sort of thing because they sit on your bench with your decal solution in no issues you can put the lid back on your decal solution without worrying you're going to knock it over and waste it all so i just put a bit of white tack on the bottom attach it to the cutting mat and then just give this micro set a shake essentially and just decant a little bit you don't need loads decant a little bit into the cap lid on now what we need to do is submerge these decals into some water so just hold them with the tweezers hold them in some sort of warm water for sort of 10 seconds ish um just to let it thoroughly soak I don't leave it in the water um, because you risk the decal coming off the backing paper and floating around in the water. So get it nice and wet, nice and submerged, and then place it face down on our kitchen paper here. And then while that's doing that, we'll do the same with the square. So again, submerge 10 seconds or so. Doesn't need to be ages um, and get that on like so now these are to me a decal so notoriously very thick difficult to use so we'll see how we get on so we're going to use the micro set and we're just going to make sure that we've got good coverage all over our instrument panel like so you can hopefully see that now sort of glistening on the camera like that then now we're going to take this so I'll cut as, as close to, as i need to around this sort of decal itself and the carrier film and what i'm going to do is just test it with my thumb and see if we've got any movement which we have as you can see it's sliding off the backing paper there so using our our cocktail stick just our tweezers and then all i'm going to do is place that decal essentially where it needs to be hold it in place with the cocktail stick and remove the backing paper get that out of the way and as we can see we've kind of got this instrument panel decal roughly where it needs to be it's not perfect yet so then using your cocktail stick you can manipulate this decal and your thumb manipulate it into exactly the position that you want it to be in like so And because we've left the black underneath around the edges and stuff we don't have to worry too much because if we're slightly off then the black paint will will kind of hide that mistake well that's certainly the theory so deckling for me is diff well i wouldn't say it's difficult but it's not something i do a lot of or haven't done a lot of because I predominantly build armor. So on armor, there's very few decals, unlike aircraft, cars, where there's there's a fair, fair few of them. So we're just making sure we're in, in the position we want because in the next stage, we're gonna try and bed that decal in now and get it properly adhered to, to the surface.
So that's where we're, about where we want it now. Um, excuse my fingers, airbrushing. Um, but yeah, that's about where we want it. So by now, this one should be ready to remove. And you can see sliding off the paper. So we do exactly the same thing. Get it off the paper. And then once we're on the, on the surface of the model, we, we need it to be, we're just going to get it roughly where we need it to be. There we go. So they look awful at the moment. So then we're going to get a Q-tip, cotton bud, get it in some microsol. We don't want it massively wet at this stage. And we're just from above, we're just going to press because obviously we've got the dial detail and we're just going to press this home like so. And this is where hopefully we're going to see these decals start to really bed in and start to conform to the surface of the model. Like so. And then with the dry end of the Q-tip, we're just going to do the same thing. Now, we're going to leave that probably about 10 minutes to let it properly um, adhere to, to the surface of the model using the micro set. Then we're going to come back in with the, the strong UMP decal solution, put that over the top, very similar process, which I'll show you, um, over the top of the decal, and that will hopefully then really start to soften it into all those raised surfaces and everything else. So I'll see you in about 10 minutes for me, in about five seconds for you. See you in a minute. Okay, so we've given it about 10 minutes. What I have done as well, as you can hopefully see there, is we've used the decal seat belts on the, uh, on the seat. Uh, we had a little breakage there, but that will be fine. We'll sort that out. But I think they look okay. Um, for what we're going to actually see once this thing's together, um, I'm quite happy with those. Do they look as good as aftermarket seatbelts? Absolutely not. But for what we're trying to achieve with an out-of-the-box build, they will do. So, also the instrument panel is, is adhered now to, to the surface. So now what we need to do is switch to a strong decal solution by UMP. Give it a good shake, get it thoroughly mixed. And what we're gonna do is use the same brush and we're just gonna coat the surface of the decal with the strong decal solution. So we take it and we just use the brush and we don't brush it on as such, we kind of dab it on. That's what we're, we're trying to do here. Um, making sure now that we're sort of pressing around all the contours of the surface, around all the edges, because this stuff is strong, clues in the title, but it is phenomenal. It, it works so well. So, where we've got that little overlap of the decal there, we're just brushing it down now onto the surface, like so. Once we've done that, we'll take a clean Q-tip now. Again, a little bit of the decal solution on there, and we're just pressing. So play, place your, your part on a hard, flat surface, and that will give you some purchase then like so, all around the edges, pushing it home. If you need a little bit more solution, that's fine, but I mean, you don't need loads, that's for sure. Switch sides if you start to get a bit of the cotton coming away. Like so. And hopefully what you will see, what you hopefully pick it up on camera, is that we are now really starting to conform 
to the surface of the model. As quick as that. In a few seconds, this stuff starts to work. Like so. So it's still wet, but hopefully you can make out that it is starting to conform to the surface of the model. What will happen, particularly on more flat surfaces when you use this stuff, is that you will see the decal on occasion start to kind of wrinkle. Um, don't panic. Don't try and do anything about it. Let the solution do its thing. Um, and it will. And then you'll come back in, I don't know, a couple of hours um, and you'll see that that wrinkling has kind of leveled. And what's actually happened is that that decal has conformed exactly how you want it to, to the surface of the model. So we're just losing it, that little bit there that's, that's broken off um, when we place the decal. So just very, very carefully using our tweezers, we're just going to place that back on to the surface of the model, he says. So as I said in the unboxing video, I'm going to make loads of mistakes in this and you're going to see them. It's quite difficult to hide mistakes on camera. There we go. That will do. And then using a cocktail stick, we're just going to push that home into place to uh, give the impression of seat belts. Unfortunately, the cocktail stick's not quite precise enough, so using the back end or the back side of the blade gives us a little bit more control. And we're, we're having a nightmare here, so I'm going to bring that down just to the bench, just so I can see better. There we go. Doing what we need it to do. So we're going to just leave that now to, to kind of set and dry. Again, with the strong solution, just pressing it home and into place, avoiding that bit there because we don't want to move that now we want that to stay where it is and and conform so seat belts are done instrument panel is done as i say i'm going to leave these for a couple of hours now let the decal solution work its magic i'm just going to go in with some white and red just on these dials and, and switches here just to um these ones here that'd be easy when it's to point out than, uh, than with my big sausage finger. So just around here where there's no decal, we'll just pick out some of these dials and switches and stuff. Um, and we'll do exactly the same on this piece here, just with these, these dials, etc., and handles and stuff. Get all those detail painted with some white and red. And the way we do that is just with the end of it, a cocktail stick really, and just dab a little bit of paint on and that'll be fine. And then what we'll do, we'll get this assembled get the cockpit assembled and then we'll weather it um to make it look more natural that's the plan so i'll see you shortly and uh, by which time all these decals should be settled um and we can start to put this together and weather the cockpit see you in a bit okay so it's been a couple of hours and now we're going to assemble the cockpit as we see here. Um, we kind of ignored pretty much um, the, the colour call outs on the instructions. We, we've kind of done our own thing to a point. Um, but we can see how it goes together. So that's in step one of the instructions. Um, fairly straightforward. What we can see here is that the, now the decal solutions have absolutely worked and now we've got the decal although it's not showing that well on camera is absolutely you can feel it with your thumb it's conformed perfectly to, to the surface of the model in the right position so very very simply all we need to do now 
is attach the seat which just slots in um, like so push that home and now we've got the paint on there i don't think we're actually going to need any glue on that to be honest it's it's a pretty tight fit um so yeah that's that's worked fine no issues at all then we're going to get this side panel as you can see like i said i was going to do i've just picked out some of the detail with some uh, model color flat white um just to obviously bring that up um and obviously as we weather it um we'll knock that effect back a little bit that again it's almost like a lego this kit um so that just kind of slides in we will put a bit of glue around the joint though because it's not uh it's not as stable as the seat that's for sure so there we go we've got the seat and the, the side etc um, attached and now what it's telling us to do is move on to this section here where we're putting the the foot pedals into place so we've got like this t-shaped area and this t-shaped hole here and now as i'm looking at this i can see that i appear to have forgotten a piece which is e10 um which is not good um so yeah so i'm looking at the instructions and if we look at this bit here, E10, I've totally forgot that piece. I've not noticed it. Um, so we're going to have to do that bit. So I'll do that off camera. It will be done in exactly the same way, exactly the same colours. There's no decals or anything required on that. And then essentially all we do is mate these two halves of the cockpit together onto those locating points there. And we'll have our cockpit together. So I'm going to do that off camera, get it all glued, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll weather it um, and get it looking a bit more natural. That's the plan. I'll do that off camera. See you in a minute. Okay, so weathering, cockpit, and all that good stuff. So here we have the two out of the way. Here we have the cockpit. So I've weathered this. Um, to sort of the level I want it. It's looking a lot more natural now, a lot more sort of blended. It's all together. Um, we put the missing piece on, uh, painting in exactly the same way. So the cockpit's all done. The weathering's gone over the decals as well. The UMP decal solutions worked. It's magic and it's all looking lovely. So how did I achieve that? So obviously we've got to do the inside of the fuselage in the, in the same way. So both where the rear, uh, the tail wheel is, and also the actual interior of the cockpit. So you can see on this one, that's looking a lot darker than this one. So this is just painted in exactly the same way as the, the rest of the cockpit. Black UMP primer, and then Tamiya cockpit green over the top. And then we've just picked out this little uh, handle here so i'm going to show you how we achieve it so the first thing we're going to use is citadel non oil um, which is obviously one of their shade paints so it's very translucent there's no clear coat required um, and we're just gonna with a quite a large brush we're just going to paint this all over the cockpit green now we've got this kind of ribbon interior detail here so what we want to try and do is go in the opposite direction to that which will as you can see leave the non oil sort of against the edge of the ribbon detail and that's what we want to do so you can be quite generous with it you've got plenty of working time with this stuff um, we have got an ejection pin mark here but we're not going to worry about that because you're not going to see that once the actual cockpit's in the fuselage we won't see it so rather than risk damaging any of the other detail that's molded in we're just going to leave that where it is um, and we just go all over it with the non oil it will darken the green which is what we want 
8 will also accentuate a lot of that detail that we can see. Now, if you've got a little bit too much in between that ribbon detail, just use the brush and just move it around a little bit and it achieves that. And that's what we want. Just clean that with water. It's acrylic base, so there's no issue. So once it's dry, you will have this sort of effect that we've got on the rear. So you can see there where it's still wet, it's quite shiny. That takes about 20, 25 minutes to dry. And then we'll end up with this. <clears throat> so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take Citadel Shabti Bone and we're gonna dry brush over the top of the green. So use a nice soft flathead brush don't use an expensive brush for this because dry brushing will will ruin your brush pretty much over time. So we just get rid of most of the paint off the brush. And as you can see on the actual cockpit itself, that's the kind of effect we're going for. It's sort of around the edges, give it this blended, dusty, worn look. So that's what we're going for. So very gently, we just go over the raised detail. And we just build it up. Less is more. We just build it up. You can always add more if you need it. It's, you're not going to be able to take it off. Um, so round the edges. And all that good stuff. And it's as simple as that really. Now... You can go to town with the cockpits, you chip in and all that stuff, but I'm gonna keep this aircraft fairly clean. Um, it's not gonna be massively beat up, I don't think. I don't think we're going for that sort of look. So this is more than adequate for what we need. And then what you'll see, hopefully, is how that's blended in. Um, like so. And as we build that sort of dusty worn effect up all over the raised detail then what we will end up with is this and that that's exactly what we're looking for and you can see the null oil has sort of settled in and around all the recessed areas to create some shade uh, very similar to like a panel line wash really and this is just an easy way of doing it um, and as I say, no clear coats on this at all, um, as it stands. And, and there we go. So I'm going to obviously wait for this section to dry. We'll do exactly the same all over it. And then on the other half of the fuselage, we've picked out the detail there. The Norn Oil um, is, is in now and dry. So I'll go around and dry brush um, all over this. Um, and then that's the, the sort of internals of the cockpit done. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to move on to the, the engine, the cowling. Um, we are building out the box. However, the engine is lacking um, sort of detail. Um, so we're going to add some wiring detail to the engine. Um, I'll show you. I'm going to try and mask the inside of the, the engine cowling here. So at the front, um, you can see where I've marked it there. At the front, from reference pictures, that's sort of a, an off-white colour um, with sort of primer, zinc oxide primer on the rest of it. So we're going to try and do that um, and, and get the, the cowling looking nice. What we'll probably do while the cowling is off the model is this front area here up until this panel line, excuse my fingernails, very dirty painting, um, where this panel line is here, this front ring, if you like, is yellow um, on the scheme we're doing. So we'll probably paint that off the aircraft um, and then we can mask that um, once the yellow's all dry and it will make it a lot easier. So we'll do that in the next video as well as putting some detail on the engine. So that's it. We're we're getting there. Um, we we're pretty much there with the internal internal colours and stuff. So if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe. Subscribe to.
Black Rifle Model Works and Ultimate Modeling Products YouTube channel. Go and visit umpretail.com. Um, if you haven't already, come and join the Black Rifle Model Works Facebook group. And until next time, stay safe. Happy hobby. Bye-bye.